Hello and welcome everyone to today's session, CIO Whiteboard Designing a Cloud Integration Strategy. My name is Rick Nucci. I'm the Founder and Chief Technology Officer of Boomi. Uh, today I'm going to focus on uh, a couple of areas around uh, starting with Boomi and who we are and what we do and what my focus is, and then sort of talk about a little bit of the evolution of integration. Um, talk about integration specifically in cloud and SaaS ecosystem, and then um, talk about sort of our experiences in working with CIOs who are presently designing an integration strategy for their SaaS and cloud applications. Um, as you have questions, please go ahead and um, enter them into the Q&A uh, control panel and your WebEx meeting control panel, and uh, I'll be sure to have plenty of time at the end uh, for questions. So I always like to start with uh, looking at SaaS adoption in general, and um, one of the issues that continues to be uh, forefront in everyone's mind, uh, kind of the top three things that people look at when they're considering SaaS and cloud services, um, and integration is always in that list. And in this particular survey, which was conducted by um, Sagatuck, over the course of 2008 and 2009, with uh, almost 2,000 respondents representing enterprises, executives across enterprises, um, you can see that four different categories actually are pertaining to um, integration. And, uh, you know, it continues to be something that is top of mind, and it continues to be something that people focus on. And, you know, throughout this session, I'll sort of be talking about why that is. So... Quick note about Boomi, and this is really to give you a little bit of context on um, what our company is, who I am, and, and sort of what, uh, what, what what's our business. Even talking about this stuff, so we've been we've been working on and focusing on integration um, for over ten years now. We uh, launched um, the first pure cloud integration platform in uh, January of 2008, and we focus specifically on integration as it pertains to the SaaS and cloud ecosystem, both working with the partner community, such as SaaS ISVs, cloud service providers, as well as um, systems integrators that have a focus in SaaS and cloud. So this is our exclusive focus. This is a problem domain that we look at exclusively in our company, and we spend a ton of our time engaged with ISVs understanding what objections get raised by their end customers. We also go to the other side of the table working with the end customer as they're looking at SaaS strategy. And actually part of my my overview tonight is to help to provide uh, what are some specific things to be considering and looking at uh, when you're evaluating SaaS from an integration perspective. Um, our focus, again, is to provide as much connectivity as we can across the SaaS ecosystem and enable the connectivity between those apps and on-premise applications residing behind a firewall, so how to connect those different things together. Um, but uh, kind of enough about Boomi. Again, that, that, um, our focus is you know, we sort of live, eat, and breathe integration, which I guess is as much a good thing as it is a bad thing, but um, nonetheless, it is our exclusive focus, and we do have a lot of insight from our community that I want to effectively share now for the rest of this presentation and um, hopefully arm you with some useful information. Uh, this session is also being recorded, so you'll be able to um, share this with your colleagues as well. So a quick chat about the evolution of integration, and I think this is important because, you know, one of the concerns, and rightly so, is are we going to recreate you know, something like this. And um, I always like to show this and, and sort of level set. You know, this is sort of what was going on in the late 90s and early 2000s, and these are the types of environments where um, SAP or, or a suite or ERP-type solution would go in and have a very strong value prop because they'd be able to reduce, minimize, eliminate a lot of what, what, became known at, what became known as application integration spaghetti, where for various reasons that we'll talk about, you would have a, a massively complex series of things to make all your systems work together. And that massively complex series of things, generally known as middleware, um, would, would, would really uh, force your IT landscape environment to be very rigid and inflexible and would really put you in a situation where you'd be locked into the version of software that you had because in order to upgrade it, um, you'd have to rip out and redo a lot of this stuff. So, you know, we got a lot smarter 
um, moving into the 2000s, and um, service-oriented architectures became um, uh, popular and became kind of the de facto standard in how systems are architected. And uh, this blends very, very directly into a lot of modern architectures employed by multi-tenant SaaS applications, as an example. And um, SOA kind of got a bad name because what a, a lot of vendors did was um, tried to 